In this video, we'll look at the parts of a road. Uh, we are just going to look at a flexible pavement road, which is by far the most common road used in New Zealand. We'll start with an urban road, and then we'll look at the parts of a rural road after that. So this diagram shows an urban road. The road is constructed within a road reserve, which is also known as the road corridor. The road reserve is an area of land designated as being for a road and the associated parts of a road, such as the berm and the footpath. The road reserve extends from the front boundary of the properties on either side of the road. For a two lane road, that is one lane in each direction, which is what is shown here, the road reserve is typically 16 to 20 metres wide. For larger roads, such as arterial roads and motorways, which have more lanes, um, they need a wider road reserve to accommodate the extra lanes. The part of the road where the traffic flows on is called the carriageway, and it's also known as the roadway. Uh, the, the surface of the carriageway uh, usually has a watertight layer known as the surfacing. Uh, surfacing may also be called the wearing course or the top course. The surfacing provides a safe surface for vehicles to move on and holds the surface together under the loads from the traffic, as well as preventing water from entering the underlying layers. The most common types of surfacing in New Zealand are chip seal and asphaltic concrete. Water on the road surface reduces the, risk, uh, the, the grip that vehicle tyres have on the road, so the road surface needs to be as clear of water as possible. So therefore it's sloped from the centre of the road down to the uh, curb and channel. Uh, so the water that falls on the road flows down into the curb and channel. This slope is called the camber. Uh, and most sealed roads have a camber of about 3%. That is, the road drops 3 units for every, uh, every 100 units that you go across. So under the surface is the base course and sub-base layers, which support and distribute the vehicle loads. Uh, distributing the load means that there is less stress, that is load, on the soil that's underneath. The soil underneath is typically much weaker than the road. So the loads that are applied here as point sources from a tyre are actually distributed. Um, so that by the time they get down to the soil, they are much less intense and can be carried by the, the soil underneath. So underneath the um, base course and the sub-base is the subgrade. And the subgrade is the top of the existing soil, the part of the existing soil that is actually carrying the road. Uh, now, we mentioned the surface water causing all sorts of problems, but also water can be underneath the surface, and that's called subsurface water. And that needs to be removed as well. Subsurface water, um, if it's... Um, present too many, if there's too much of it, then it will weaken the subgrade. It will soften the soil and the soil will, will, will settle. Also, if it gets into the base course and the sub-base, it can also weaken them because it, because it lubricates the contact surfaces between them and once again uh, weakens the whole road. And so we want to get rid of that, um, that subsurface water as, as much as we can, and that's what these subsoil drains do. The subsurface water flows into these subsurface subsoil drains. Uh, it flows down to the uh, the catch pits, which are part of the surface uh, drainage system. And the catch pits drain it into the stormwater system. The stormwater system takes it off for safe disposal. So we will now look at each of these components in a little bit more detail. This time, starting at the bottom and working our way up. The existing material along the line of the road may be an existing road that, that needs to be repaired or rebuilt. So in this case, the road will stay at the original level, so the earthworks is not usually required. However, other roads may be through bush or grass areas uh, called greenfield sites, and the road may need to be built above or below the existing ground level, and that's where we use earthworks. So earthworks is removing soil, usually, or rock from one area, and relocating it into another area to provide a smooth profile re required by the road. For example, there may be gullies and hills along the road route, so we need to cut into the hills and fill in the gullies so the road follows a direct route and the slopes on the road are smooth and not too steep. 
usually greenfield sites have topsoil and vegetation uh, on the surface. This material needs to be removed and disposed of as topsoil is not a suitable foundation for a road, it's just too soft. This site clearance operation exposes the underlying soil or rock upon which the road can be built. So looking at these drawings here, this first one here shows uh, a road at grade. And in this case, all the, you can see that the, the existing ground level is shown as green and the road is shown as a dashed black line. So in this case here, all we have to do is remove the topsoil and the vegetation and then shape the road using a grader. So it just needs to be graded. So that's why we call it a road at grade. No work, earthworks really required for this part of the road. Sometimes the, uh, the, the section of the road is below the existing uh, ground level, in which case you need to do a cutting. You need to remove the soil, either move it into a fill area or take it away for disposal. That's called a road and cut. Sometimes the road surface, shown here, is above the existing ground level, in which case we need to build up the uh, surface to that higher level there, and that's called fill, or um, that structure there is called an embankment. So that's called road on an embankment or road and fill. And other times we need to build the road on a slope, so we're going around a hill or something like that, so there's the slope of the hill, and you can see there's the shape of the uh, of the road and in this case here it's a, called a sidling cut so when you're cutting into the side of a hill it's called a sidling cut in this case here it's a sidling cut and cut and fill so in cut and fill this part here is being cut and then placed here which is a fill so there's the cut there's the fill that's below the ground that's above the ground you can also have cut uh, sidling cuts where you're entirely cut uh, and cutting into the side of the hill, or sometimes you've got the whole fill embankment on the side of the hill as well. The surface of the finished earthworks is called the formation. The formation level, or FL for short, is the height of the finished earthworks relative to a datum, and it's usually shown on the drawings. Now a datum is a standard level that we use to measure heights. Uh, the most common datum we use is mean sea level. So an earthwork surface that is 20 metres above the sea level datum is said to have a formation level of 20. The formation level for each part of the road is determined during the design process and is shown on the construction drawings. Providing the formation level enables the road to be constructed to the correct levels. The soil that supports the road loadings is called the subgrade. The definition of how deep the subgrade is varies, but an indicative depth is about one metre. However, the soil below the subgrade is also carrying uh, the road loadings, although uh, much less loading than um, over here, because the loadings are actually distributed from the surface uh, across the whole soil body. The subgrade also extends outside of the carriageway as the soil here is providing lateral support to the road. So the road loadings are pushing down and the soil is trying to bulge out this way, but this part of body of soil is actually resisting it and holding it all in. In addition, you notice that the uh, subgrade extends out this way because the road loadings are actually distributed uh, as you go further down uh, into the, the body of the soil. The subgrade is compacted to make it stronger and able to better support the road. It's also shaped to match the shape of the final road. So notice that it's got the same 3% slope that the camber has on the, the road surface. Uh, so that means that the subsurface water, the water that sort of gathers it here, actually flows away from the part of the subgrade that is being that is carrying the road loads. Subgrade, especially clays, will weaken when they are too wet. So you want to get the subgrade, uh, subsurface water away from that area where the road loadings are being supported. 
And also having the subgrade sloping at the same camber means that the sub base and the base course layers are a constant thickness across the whole width of the road, which makes it easier to lay and compact them. So some soils are naturally strong and can support the, the road loading. However, other soils may not be as strong and need to be strengthened. We'll look at subgrade strengthening methods such as geogrids and lime stabilisation in later videos. Sometimes soils are just too weak or are otherwise unsuitable to be a subgrade, and so these soils need to be removed and replaced with stronger materials. That is a very expensive option and you're usually your last resort. The next part of the road that we're looking at is the uh, subsoil drainage and stormwater system. This is usually installed before you start installing the, the sub base and base course. Uh, so there's water under the road surface. This water can come from surface water soaking through cracks in the road surface, from surface water flowing into the road pavement, or from groundwater rising up, which is what's shown here. This blue line here is the water table, so it might be that there's a high water table or there's flooding going on and the water table's risen up to this level here. And notice that it's sitting inside of the um, base sub base. Now that can weaken the sub base because it lubricates the connections between the sub base particles and it can also cause pore pressures which also weaken the subgrade. So we, we don't want the water table sitting up this high, we want to reduce it down. And the way we do that is using these things here called subsoil drains. And what a subsoil drain is, is basically a trench, maybe 600, uh, sometimes shallower, sometimes deeper. Uh, it's filled up with drainage aggregate. Uh, you can see this blue here is the water table there. Uh, and the water from the water table or that's, that, that flows into this trench flows into the pipe via the perforations in the pipe. So the pipe is a, a perforated pipe. Oftentimes they'll call that type of pipe an overflow. Uh, and once it sort of enters the pipe, it flows along the pipe um, into the catch pits, which also collect the surface water. Uh, the surface water and the subsurface water then flow from the catch pits to the stormwater system, which takes it away for, for disposal. So when that happens, when the subsoil drain removes the water, what happens is the water table drops and you end up with this shape here. So there's the typical water table level. And because the water is being withdrawn from the subsoil drain, uh, it drops. Much the same as when you drain a sink of water, the uh, water will bulge down around the sinkhole. That's what happens here. And so what that results in is the water table dropping down below the sub-base level, which is what we want. And once again, that water flows into the stormwater system for disposal. Sometimes uh, filter fabric is installed on the subgrade before we start putting down the base course. This is especially um, popular when we uh, the subgrade is made up of clay. The filter fabric prevent, prevents the clay or silt particles migrating up into the subbase um, while it still allows the water that is trapped in the, the pavement to actually drain out. So rising water tables can carry clay or silt particles up into the sub-base and base course, which eventually cause them to block up and also become impermeable. The water gets trapped in the sub-base and base course layers, resulting in a loss of strength as the water lessens the contact between the aggregate particles and lubricates the contact areas. Um, however, we, we do need to drain the water out of the sub-base. So filter fabric is a synthetic material that has very fine holes in it. So this bottom diagram here, the red is the filter fabric, and you see there's little holes in there. Those little holes are supposed to be too small for these soil particles. So these soil particles are shown in orange. They can't get through those holes. They're too big. However, the water molecules, which are a million times smaller, are able to flow out. So the filter fabric acts like a gate, if you like. The soil particles can't migrate up but the water particles can migrate down. In most roads, 
carriageway is made up of several layers of granular materials topped with a bitumen surface. Collectively, the sub-base, base course and the surfacing are called the pavement, and they are what is the main st um, structure which distributes the traffic loads down to the subgrade. The bottom layer is called the sub-base course, or more usually just the sub-base. Uh, the sub-base has a mix of sand and varying soil uh, size stones with a maximum size of 65 millimetres. It's often called GAP65, GAP65, which stands for General All Passing a 65 millimetre sieve. The photo here shows a sub base being laid. The truck in the background has delivered the aggregate while the roller has compacted it, and there is a grader off to the side which is shaping it. Note the pegs here every 20 metres. Uh, these are guide the workers so that they lay the sub-base in the right place and to the right level. The top layer is called the base course. Typically it is also a mix of sand and gravel, but the maximum size is 40 millimetres, uh, and it's called a gap 40, or general or passing a 40 millimetre sieve. So the base course has a smaller maximum stone size than the sub-base, which allows it to be compacted into a stronger layer which provides much better resistance to both the vertical loads from the weight of traffic on the road and also the horizontal loads from uh, vehicles turning, braking and accelerating. So we'll look at these forces in a little bit more detail in another video. So while the, the gap 65, the, um, the sub-base, is, is not as strong as the base course, it's not really a problem because the base course distributes the surface loadings down through its depth. So at the sub-base level, the stresses, the, the, the loadings, are not as high as what they are on the surface because they've been distributed. So that's really what the, the sub-base and base course layers do. They distribute the, la the, the loading from the surface there so that by the time it gets down to the um, sub-base, it is at a low enough uh, loading so that the subbase can support, so that the subgrade can support it without um, failing. <sighs> Granular layers are made up of aggregate. An aggregate is basically a mix of sand and gravel. The mix of different size particles is called the grading of the aggregate. The grading needs to fall within certain ranges to allow it to lock together to form a suitably strong layer. For example, a base course needs to have a 5 to 15 percent uh, fine sand, uh, 10 to 25 percent uh, coarse sand, about 20 to 35 percent fine gravel, and about 45 to 55 percent of coarse gravel. To provide a granular layer that's strong enough to withstand the roading, um, loadings when compacted. This max minimum this mix maximizes, sorry, this mix maximizes the amount of coarse particles in the aggregate with enough finer particles to fill the voids between the coarser particles. So basically what happens is compaction of the aggregate pushes and kneads and vibrates the sand and gravel particles into a tightly packed layer. The coarse particles form a primary load bearing structure which transmits and disperses the road loadings. via contact points between the coarse particles. So there's the contact points there and there. Finer particles in the voids between the coarse particles prevent the coarse particles from moving under load. So they are wedged in there, holding it in place. And also distribute the load, as shown here. So there's a, a finer particle distributing the load. In between these finer particles, there are even finer particles, uh, which again support the coarser particles and distribute the load and so on. So basically, the coarse particles carry most of the load while the finer particles hold them in place. If there were no fine particles, then the coarse particles would move under load and the road surface would settle. Additionally, the particles would be plucked out of the aggregate um, by the road loadings, especially lateral loadings, which are caused by braking or accelerating or turning of the cars. If there was too much fine material, then the coarse particles are less likely to be in contact, 
so preventing them transmitting and distributing the road loads. The loads would be transmitted to the fine particles, which would move, resulting in sediment to the road surface. So the mix of particles required to produce the required grading does not happen naturally. Base course and sub-base aggregates need to be produced. This is done at a quarry, where the rock is quarried, crushed and mixed to form the aggregates with the required grading. They can produce the aggregate layer that has the right strength. The base course layer is usually topped with the surfacing. The surfacing layer has two functions. Firstly, it prevents water from soaking down into the base course and sub-base. And as we talked about before, that can cause to the lubrication of the contact surfaces, which causes them to slip, but also um, it can result in the pore pressures pushing the particles apart, once again causing them to move. The second function of the surfacing is to provide a safe surface for vehicles to travel on. This means it needs to provide grip between the road and the vehicle tyres. Therefore the surface does need a rough texture, however if the surface is too rough then it exert, causes excessive vibration resulting in road noise and increased wear on the tyres. Water on the road surface can reduce the contact between the tyres and the road which increases the risk of vehicle skidding. Therefore the surface has to shed water as quickly as possible. We looked at that before, that's what the camber is for. It lets the water flow off the road quickly. The main surfacing used in New Zealand are chip seal or asphaltic concrete. There are variations and combinations of these two basic surfacing, uh, surfacings which will be covered in the road pavement micro-credential. In this video we'll just look at the two most common surfacings. There are also uh, roads that do not have a surface and they're called unsealed roads. So let's look at a chip seal. So a chip seal involves laying a la layer of bitumen binder, shown in blue here, uh, on the surface from a bitumen spray, spray truck. Tip trucks then lay the chip which is rolled to push the chips into the bitumen and roll the chips over so that they interlock to provide better resistance to being plucked out of the surface by vehicle movements. The chip becomes strongly embedded when the bitumen cools and hardens. This is the most common way of sealing roads in New Zealand. However, the other way that is quite common and becoming more popular is asphaltic concrete. So asphaltic concrete has an aggregate in the binder, but in this case the binder uh, is wrapped around the aggregate. So the smaller pieces of aggregate are coated in bitumen that bind together when compacted. It's also known as asphalt, AC or hot mix. The aggregate and binder are mixed at a plant and then transported to site. On site it is laid using a paving machine which lays it out in an even layer where, from where it is rolled. Asphaltic concrete is more expensive than chip seal but provides a less coarse surface while still providing the required contact between the vehicle tyres and the road. The smoother surface means that uh, less road noise and a smoother ride. The surface drainage system collects and disposes of rainwater on the surface of the road. The water on the road surface lessens the friction between the road and the tyres on the, on the vehicles. Uh, lessening of friction results in more chances of the vehicle losing control uh, and skidding. This skidding is called aquaplaning. The rainwater flowing off the road is called runoff. Uh, the road usually has a camber of 3% so the runoff flows down into the uh, ch channel. The channel conveys the uh, runoff to the catch pit where it combines with the subsurface water from the subsoil drains and from the there it flows into the stormwater manhole and from the stormwater manhole it flows into the um, natural water system. There are other more environmentally friendly ways of disposing of stormwater uh, called low impact design and we'll look at this more in the road drainage micro-credential. So now let's look at a rural road. So this drawing shows a typical cross section through a rural road. In many ways it's the same as an urban road in that it is built on a road reserve it has a carriageway which with the same pavement structure 
but note it does not have a curb and channel. The stormwater is usually allowed to just flow off the sides of the road or to a surface water channel, also known as a swale or a drain, which transports it to a suitable disposal area. Rural areas have a tapered edge leading down to the, to the surface water channel. Uh, this may also be called, they call it a tapered edge or a feathered edge. This edge allows the stormwater to flow away to below the level of the pavement. Feather edges ideally have a maximum slope of 20%, otherwise referred to as 1 in 5. That is, it drops 1 metre for every 5 metre width. At this slope, vehicles can pull over and park with less risk of rolling. Trucks and vans are especially vulnerable to rolling as they have a higher centre of gravity. Sometimes there's no choice and you have to have a steeper feather edge, a st steeper tapered edge, uh, but this is not ideal. The surface water channel is just a channel cut into the side of the road. It may also be known as a swale or a drain. The surface water channel is, is used to allow the stormwater to flow to a suitable disposal area. Alternatively, there may be no table drain or feather, uh, surface water channel, as the runoff can just flow into the uh, land beside the road. This photo shows a road with a surface water channel on either side of the road. The photo is taken at the bottom of the slope, so both surface water channels divert off the edge of the road reserve. The discharge channel of the right hand channel here can be seen here just behind this post uh, with 254 written on it. Uh, it discharged into a small gully uh, off to the side here. Note the left hand channel here is rock lined to prevent the channel eroding. Note also that there are small pipes under the driveways. These are called culverts and they allow the channel to continue along without getting blocked by the driveways. So that is a quick overview of the different parts of both rural and urban roads. Um, we will develop these ideas a little bit more in further videos.